Seven o'clock, Dr. Barnes. Dr. Barnes. Uh, what? Seven o'clock. Morning or evening? Evening. Have I had my supper? Uh, yes. Well, I'm still hungry. How do you account for that? It's your liver. Uh, you can't tell me anything about my liver. Well, I could. If I could, I would be the liver specialist and you would be my assistant. My wife's going to the theater tonight, isn't she? Uh, yes, and you're going with her. Who said so? Uh, she did. Uh, she's usually right. Her choices are excellent, with a few exceptions. Theaters, for instance, uh, she likes those noisy plays. Uh, they won't allow anyone to sleep. Well, it would take several brass bands to keep you awake. What's the use of staying awake? Nothing ever happens nowadays. Doesn't it? You're too sleepy to notice. Oh, what do you mean? Did it ever occur to you that people can suffer from love as well as liver? Who the dickens is in love? Keep awake, you'll find out. <sighs> Minter, do you know why I continue to employ you? Because I continue to stay with you. You haven't ever mentioned leaving. I wouldn't mention it. I'd go. I think you had better go. You are getting too fresh. Uh, what time for breakfast? Breakfast shouldn't concern you. It never does, because I don't take it. What time for you? Uh, uh, Minter, I am terminating your service. Uh, uh, here's your salary. Uh, we'll say eight, then. Uh, I said you are terminated. Are you refusing to go? You better get dressed for the theater. Minter, you are most impertinent. Try to remember the difference in our stations. Oh, there's the doorbell. Shall you answer it? What do you mean? That is the difference in our stations. Oh, life would be very pleasant and peaceful if it were not for Minter. But he's an evil, an evil necessity. A lady here to see you, Dr. Barnes. I'm not consulting. It's after hours. Sorry, too late. Here she is. How do you do? Hey, won't you sit down? <laughs> the lady is not a patient. Uh, you can go, Minter. Ooh, sorry I spoke. Thought I'd put you wise. I'm waiting. All right, but don't forget, it isn't liver. It's love. Oh, please pardon Minter. I'm getting rid of him shortly. Oh, no, please don't. He's such a nice fellow. So handsome, so perceptive. Eh, he's very perceptive about hearing the doorbell, but he can't even do that without boasting about it. Oh, he understood me at once. I know it's a scandalous hour to call on you, but I told him that it was a very important matter, and he showed me right in. Mm. Uh, well, what can I do for you? Well, of course, you know my husband. Oh, my name is Hedda Tremaine. My uh -huh. husband is Carl Tremaine, the musician. Oh, yes. Uh, my, I believe my wife took me to hear him sing one day. No, 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 no. Play the piano. He's a very fine pianist. Oh, my impression was that he sang. Uh, perhaps someone else did. Music always confuses me. Well, it's about Carl. That's why I came to see you. Ah, yes. Uh, pianists frequently have liver complaints, uh, chiefly due to the sedentary life they lead. He should take a course in dancing and after every six scale or uh, arpeggio. He uh, should do a buck and wing <laughs> or a little ballet. If you had time, you could shimmy with him. That would be better still. Oh, oh, no, no. His liver is perfectly all right. Oh, then your husband cannot interest me, madam. I specialize in the liver. Oh, he's sound as a bell physically. It's his mental condition I want to talk to you about. You see, he's desperately in love. Oh, don't do anything for it. It will cure itself. Oh, oh perhaps you think he's, he's in love with me. Well, not at present. Just now, he's in love with your wife. Well, that's perfectly natural and a healthy sentiment, too. Uh, my wife is a very attractive woman, and anyone who is immune to her beauty would probably be suffering from some liver complaint. 
Oh, and then <laughs> you have no objection to their affection for each other? Oh, their affection? I was not aware that my wife reciprocated the attachment. No, I thought not. Well, she does. Uh, <laughs> well, there, there must be some mistake. My wife is always candid with me, uh, and she hasn't even mentioned him. Well, for he never lies to me either. Uh, he wouldn't tell me that if he wasn't sure. Uh, what do you prefer? Should I blacken your husband's eye, or will you be going after my wife's hair? Oh, I prefer to avoid those very things. My husband is coming to see you. Promise me you will not injure him in any way. Well, I intend to be completely gracious with your wife. But wouldn't we be committing a social error by taking it so calmly? Oh, no. The best way for us to react to their social error is by committing one ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, besides, why should they get all the publicity? We can create a bigger sensation by remaining perfectly calm. Oh, you, you seem to be quite certain that you and I would make a good partnership in this affair. I hope your proposals are strictly businesslike. Absolutely. Don't you see? As soon as we introduce emotion, we lose our calm. In fact, our calm is essential to balance their emotion. Uh, you have somewhat relieved my mind. Well, of course, <laughs> we could have a little intrigue on the side uh, just to amuse ourselves and to complicate matters for them. Oh, I'm beginning to be frightened again. Oh, there's no need for that. I wouldn't have suggested an intrigue if I hadn't sensed an element of sport in you. Oh, my dear lady, when did you ever hear of a sporty liver specialist? No, that's true. I never expected you to be like this. Uh, of course, uh, if we enter into this agreement, we do it for the sake of our respective conjugal partners, not for each other's, nor for our own. Absolutely. It's entirely unselfish. And my wife, Grace, is a very delightful woman, and the only reason I specialized in livers was to be able to shower her with the fees that I collect from my wealthy clients. <laughs> oh, that's nothing. I have sued every limousine company and several construction companies for my carefully calculated sprained ankles, and I've obtained damages in every case. That's how I provide Carl with our regular European musical vacations. Oh, how noble of you. Uh, we certainly do have something in common. Oh, you are quite different from what I expected. <laughs> I think you are the first woman who really interests me, except Grace. You are almost the only man who has ever attracted me, except Carl. What was it about me that suggested sport or intrigue to you? <laughs> oh, now you are getting inquisitive. <laughs> Very inquisitive. Well, I'll tell you, it's in your eye. Really? Yes. It's the way you look at a person. You seem to search one's very liver. Oh, I mean soul. I'm trying to search yours to understand your suggestion of an intrigue. <laughs> oh, you are dying to be a sport. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't the intrigue itself. It's your idea of one which interests me. Then I'll tell you. For a long time, I have been looking for someone to share my secret passion. I believe you are the person. Oh, you amaze me. Oh, this is no ordinary passion. A famous adventuresses, oh. vampires, and sirens never experienced a hunger such as mine. And I think that I had better back out. Oh, please don't. My insatiable craving is the desire for a very simple object. Gum. <gasps> gum. Yes, gum. Mm. Chewing gum. Oh, a plain, ordinary gum will do, but I delight in the fancy kinds. The refreshing spearmint, the sensuous clove, the juicy, tooty fruity. My husband knows of my passion. He thwarts me at every turn. He won't have a piece of gum in the house. He would rather have me, well, elope to Honolulu with a bartender than catch me chewing one little morsel of gum. But 
now that he is seeking his independence from me, don't you think my needs des deserve to be satisfied? Why, yes. And the amazing coincidence is that I, too, have the same craving and am thwarted by my wife in the same way. Oh, I knew I had come to the right man. The moment I saw you, I knew you were my chewing gum conspirator. I'm almost afraid to show this to anyone. I've kept it hidden so long. Oh, oh my, how marvelous. Ridley Spearmint. Oh, give me some. Be careful. Um, Grace might come in at any moment and, and then there would be a terrible scene. Oh, what do we care about Grace or Carl or anyone? Let's be rash. Let's abandon ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, but rapture. Oh, it has a wonderful aroma, hasn't it? Oh, this risk of discovery will never do. We must meet in some secret place. What about the subway? Oh, the subway. Mm, just you and I and our gum on a long ride. Perhaps to the Bronx Zoo or Van Cortland Park. Oh, it shall be. <laughs> break away. Third party's here. Um, what the? How dare you interrupt without knocking? Uh, well, for the simple reason that if I had knocked, he would have known you were here. I wanted to warn you. You'd better beat it. I think he has a revolver. Who? Her lawfully wedded husband. Oh, um, show him in. What? Show him in. Um, second thoughts, I will take my salary. Oh, and here's my revolver. Goodbye. Mm. Uh, uh, are you frightened? <laughs> of course. Not now that you know my secret. <laughs> Mr. Tremaine. How do you do? Hedda, what is the meaning of this? Oh, Carl, you bad boy. You've come here without your overcoat. Oh, it's all right. I'm keeping it for him. <gasps> Thank you so much, Mr. Minter. Oh, not at all. I'm delighted to do anything for you. <laughs> Minter, you can go. I know. Uh, please be seated, Mr. Tremaine. No, thank you. Hannah, what are you doing here? Uh, well, Mrs. Tremaine had the goodness to call on me with reference to her liver. Well, that's not true. She has no liver. Uh, dear, dear, that makes her even more interesting. Hella, you've been... Chewing. Oh, just a little, dear. Oh, oh, disgusting. Dr. Barnes, I must apologize for my wife. Oh, not at all. As you see, we've both partaken. In fact, I gave it to her. Well, you had better leave me alone with Dr. Barnes. Certainly. Uh, where shall I wait? Oh, please stay. All the other rooms are so drafty. <laughs> I don't mind drafts. I'll go and talk to Mr. Vinter. Now, Carl, take care of yourself. And Dr. Barnes, mm -hmm. don't you upset him, will you? My wife leaves me in a very awkward position. Well, sit down and make yourself comfortable. I don't wish to be comfortable. I have a very serious matter to discuss. Quite so. I always uh, more serious myself when I'm uncomfortable. I hope you will not make fun of me. It's, it's a very difficult situation. What was my wife telling you? About what? About me and my affairs. Oh, <laughs> she said you sold pianos. No, sir, I, I play them. Well, I knew you did something to them. Was your wife's name introduced? In connection with the pianos? No, 
No, in connection with me. Now, let me see. Well, if my wife tried to influence you in any way with regard to a matter which she knows I intend to put to you, I warn you not to let it have any weight. No, of course not. Of course, sir. I am adamant. Oh, I can see that you are. May I offer you a cigarette? No, thank you. Uh, how is the piano game? What piano game? Uh, the piano game in general. Look here, Dr. Barnes, you are evidently in the dark as to my mission here. <laughs> a man of your charm needs no mission. I have one, just the same. Uh, uh, I think you will admit to yourself, if not to me, that you are by nature, profession, and temperament entirely unsuited to your wife's what? society. Absolutely unsuited. Um, I'm glad to find you honest about so personal and yet so obvious a matter. Well, we married men should be very thankful to be unsuited to our wives. A woman stays attracted to a man that she can't understand. Are you sure? Yes, as long as no one else understands him. I think I understand you. You're very clever. I don't understand myself. Do you understand your wife? Oh, heaven forbid. She is the greatest study of my life. Perhaps then I am clever. I think I understand, Grace. Well, you are accustomed to intricate mechanisms. The piano must be very complicated. Are you comparing Grace to a piano? Oh, a piano has its limits. Grace has none. She has reached her limit, Dr. Barnes. Are you saying she's exhausted all the theaters and concert halls? Ah, that is your idea of grace? Well, you have a very superficial knowledge of her appetites. Let me tell you, you haven't begun to study her soul. And while you have been neglecting her, I have studied and understood her soul. Interesting. Would you mind putting your results on one of my diagnostic forms? Joke about it, Dr. Barnes. This is a serious matter. Yes, to be brief, we are so suited to each other that it would be almost criminal for us to remain separated. Who, oh, you and I? No, no, oh, your wife and I. Oh, yes. In fact, it is essential for us to be together to fulfill <coughs> our destiny. It would be useless for you to oppose us if you do. We will simply elope. Oh, yes, I remember now. You, your wife mentioned something of that sort. <laughs> she did? And then we began discussing a very important matter, and it had passed right out of my mind. Is your wife's future not an important matter? It's so important to have a, had a good past, and it is so interesting to have a good present. Consequently, the future must end up in third place. Do you mean to say that you're accepting my proposal? You said it was useless for me to oppose you. You have no objections to a man coming into your house and taking your wife from under your very nose, a, a perfect stranger? No, I have nothing against you. You seem to be a nice, clean-cut gentleman. If I knew you better, I might have some objections to you. But this is preposterous. It's, it's, it's outrageous. It's absolutely immoral. Well, surely you will put up some fight for your wife. Well, Minter loaned me his revolver to defend myself against you. No, I never used one of these things. Do you know how they work? Are you trying to make an ass of me? Oh, no, no. I assure you, if it is the proper thing to do, then I'll shoot you. Where would you like to be shot? You see, if I kill you, you will be of no further use to grace. On the other hand, it, if I wound you severely, you will again be out of luck, because grace is an atrocious nurse. I never heard anything as ludicrous in my life. Hmm. 
I can't waste another moment here. I shall go and fetch Grace and take her away from you at once. Try to be back by June 20th, will you? I always take Grace to visit my relatives in Yonkers. She entertains them while I examine their livers. I have tried hard to control myself, Dr. Barnes, but your utter contempt for the common decencies, your lack of appreciation of your wife and your general unsoundness of mind are more than I can bear. <laughs> Let me tell you all oh, my uh, life. Excuse me, but Mrs. Tremaine says not to strain your voice as you have a lecture tomorrow. Also, not to bang your fingers on the table as that will spoil your touch. What the devil are you doing out there with my wife? I was telling her how complicated my life has become now that I've started taking care of other people's wives. Oh, get out. Uh, don't forget about the voice. Good evening, Minter. George, it's time to leave for the theater. Mm. Why, there's Carl, how are you? Darling, you aren't ready for the theater. You know how I like to hear the overture. He's a terrible trial, Carl. I'll never be able to train him. Grace, come away from your husband. From Georgie? Why? Oh, I see. George Barnes, you've been chewing again. How bad of you. Throw the horrid stuff away. Yes, dear. Grace, what do you mean by this familiarity with that man? Do you realize why I came here tonight? To meet him, I suppose. Oh, have I interrupted a consultation? I am so sorry. Carl, there's nothing wrong with your liver, is there? Do you suppose I should come to your husband about my liver? I can't think of anything else you would want to see him about. Not even about you? My liver's all right, isn't it, Georgie? Have you gone out of your senses, or are you trying to fool me? because it won't work. I tell you, it won't work. Whose liver won't work? Georgie, who's ill? What's the trouble? I, I think you've forgotten an appointment you had with Mr. Tremaine. Oh dear, have I? He seems to think you made an agreement with him to elope with him. Oh, that's perfectly true, I did. Yes, dear, we had a long talk the other night and we decided it would be quite the latest thing to do. When shall we start, Carl? Good God, am I really the only sane person left? Am I to stay here and listen to a wife tell her husband that she is going to elope with me? Well, Carl, I'd have told him before, only I forgot. I think you are the most impossible people I ever met. I wouldn't elope with you if you got down on your knees and bid me. That's for you, Dr. Barnes. You're a hypocrite. Your liver must be in a wonderful condition. Would you let me use you as a standard type in my new book? No, no, I absolutely refuse. Carl isn't a standard. Everything about him is original. And I'm sure his liver is no exception. Oh, what have they been trying to do to you, Carl? Oh, leave me alone, Hedda. Are you trying to make a fool of me too? How could you say such a thing? Have, have you made a fool of Carl? How very unkind of you. I, I must apologize for my wife. Through a lapse of memory, she forgot to tell me that she was about to elope with your husband. That has apparently upset his plans, so now he is refusing to pursue the matter. <laughs> and I don't blame him. He has a very sensitive nature. And, and though big things might slip his memory, he is very particular about trifles. Trifles? I seem to have made an awful mess of things. Oh, <laughs> well, we know you didn't do it intentionally. Uh, come, Carl, dear. We, we had better go. I, I hope you are not tired, and I do hope we shall meet again. I should like to hear you play Wagner on our church organ. Oh, that's the last straw. Your wife trifles with my emotions. You outrage my sense of decency. Hannah defies my independence. <laughs> and now you cap it all with the request for Wagner on a church organ. 
do you realize that a 50-piece orchestra can only begin to interpret Wagner? And you ask for him on a noggin? Where's my coat? Ninja has it, dear. Come to dinner some night and bring your wife. If we were on a desert island and you two had the only coconut, I wouldn't chew one piece of it. What a splendid fellow. Oh, he is just splendid in his own way. Someday he will compose a symphony which even the critics will understand. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mrs. Barnes. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Dr. Barnes. Oh, I'll see you to the door. Oh, oh, please, don't trouble. One day, next week, Subway, bring the gum with you. I'll wait for a message from you. Send Minter. George. Where did you get this chewing gum? Uh, the, the woman tempted me and, and I did eat. Did she give it to you? Uh, yes, dear. Oh! Uh, now don't get angry, darling. I would far rather have you buy it yourself and be honest about it. Did you give this to Mrs. Tremaine? Certainly not. I thought no. I caught her trying to get away with it. I didn't think she was that kind of person. What are you putting it there for? Well, it belongs there, doesn't it? What makes you think that? Well, I ought to know. I've had enough of it. Minter, there's your revolver. Go shoot yourself. If I did, your business would go to the devil. I'm the only lasting impression anyone gets from a consultation with you. <laughs> uh, one moment, Minter. You are witness that my husband lied to me. Georgie, you shall pay for this. You shall not take me to the theater. Oh, dear. I shall go, and just to spite you, I shall sit by myself. Oh, dear. Um, perhaps I could be assistance to you, Mrs. Barnes. Oh, thank you, Minter. You shall take me. No, no, I object. I absolutely object to your going to the theater with Minter. You should have more regard for my feelings. Had you any regard for my feelings? I found you chewing in my house with another man's wife. Just the same. I absolutely refuse to let you go with Minter. Oh, we shall see. Oh, uh, but think, dear. Think what? If, if Minter leaves, I shall have to answer the doorbell. Oh. <sighs> What's the use of keeping awake? <laughs> Nothing ever happens nowadays. <sighs> 